Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Synology's C2 backup service, including pricing and some of the features specifically designed for users of Synology NAS devices. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get right to it. So I've had the chance to start testing Synology C2 backup service and to look at the special features that they claim on their website to determine whether they actually add anything to the mix and make Synology C2 a compelling option for offsite data backups. So on that note, when I was looking through the feature list of the different plans, the first thing that caught my eye was for free file versioning. So what this means is that only the size of your source files counts against your data allotment. So if, for instance, you have 270 gigabytes of source files, then you can, that means you would have to purchase the 300 gigabyte tier that you see here. With every tier in the plan one, so that's the 100 gigabyte, 300 gigabyte, and the one terabyte options, you get 11 versions of your backup data. So that means your complete set of your source files, plus 10 additional backups you can go to that have all the changes to the recent files that you have changed over those 10 previous backups. So where this is really cool is all those additional versions of data are completely free to you. And the ability to go back in time is very beneficial, especially if you're hit by a ransomware virus that would encrypt your data. So maybe your most recent backup might all be encrypted, but you can go back in time and restore files uh, from a period of time when they weren't encrypted. Or for example, maybe somebody accidentally messes up uh, a CAD file or a 3D model or a video editing project and you need to go back in time to restore a previous version so that you don't have to completely restart a project. So having free file versioning is very interesting. And in some certain use cases, this could prevent you from having to go up a tier in terms of pricing. But there is a downside to this and that's the fact that Synology is selling the data backups in different tiers. So for every use case where having uh, the free file version, you might prevent you from having to go up a tier in storage. There's gonna be a version, or there's gonna, there's gonna be a person out there that has a real world scenario where they have 350 gigabytes of source files and they have to make the jump up to one terabyte uh, simply because they need to back up 350 gigabytes of files and that's the next tier up. And it's a pretty big price increase even though it's only 50 gigabytes extra of data. So there are some pros and cons to how they're offering the, the plans in terms of storing your data and how free file versioning could be beneficial. Where this could be particularly beneficial is if you're doing backups to a server, for instance, that has a data center that might have a particularly large database. Say, for example, you have a database that's 30 gigabytes. However, a period of 10 days, that's 300 gigabytes of data that is essentially free for you to back up. So if you are backing up a server that might have 200 gigabytes of storage and 30 gigabytes are changing on a daily, daily basis because that database is changing on a daily basis, that means you very easily have the ability to have you know 500 gigabytes of storage for the price of 300 gigabytes. So there are different use cases where this is could be highly beneficial, but for every use case, like I was saying, there's gonna be examples where someone just needs an extra 50 or even 20 gigabytes of storage, but has to make a big jump to the next tier up. So the next feature for Synology C2 that I want to discuss is the backup scheduling and the difference between the two different plans. So with the plan one options, you have at most a daily backup for your offsite storage. With the plan two, you do have the ability to do an hourly backup. And there are valid use cases where you might want something more regular than a daily backup. And with the plan one options, you simply can't do that. So in some, certain use cases, this won't be a massive price increase. So if for example, you already have one terabyte under the plan one option, you're only gonna have to pay 10 euros more to upgrade to the one terabyte plan two option. Where this gets particularly nasty is if you have a small subset of data Say you have 50 gigabytes of data that you want to be backed up on a very regular basis and once per day isn't going to cut it. You will have to make the jump from a 10 euro per year plan to the 70 euro per year plan and that's a seven fold increase just to get something that is more regular even if you don't really need the big increase for the amount of data storage. So there are some drawbacks to this and there are certain use cases where if you do need regular backups but you don't have a huge uh, segment of data that needs to be backed up on a regular basis where a service like Amazon S3 might even still be cheaper. 
Uh, so you kind of have to weigh your use case against the pricing and the other special features with Synology C2. The next two features I'm going to discuss is data encryption and the ability to restore files from the web browser. But data encryption this isn't really a special feature at all with Synology C2 because with every single hyper backup task you're running, regardless of whether you're sending that to a cloud provider or even a volume on your Synology, you can always use a password to encrypt the data of your backup. On another note, the ability to restore from a web browser is also not really a unique feature. I know with Amazon's AWS uh, for example, if you're backing up to an S3 bucket, all you have to do is log into your AWS console and you can navigate to that bucket and download individual files. Where this is actually a unique feature though, is if you combine data encryption with the ability to restore from the web browser. So if you are backing up to Amazon's AWS and you navigate to the S3 bucket, but you have encrypted your files, even if you download that file, it will still be encrypted and you won't be able to open it and use it right off the bat. On the flip side, if you navigate to your Synology C2 web console and try to access a file, it'll actually prompt you for a password. If you enter the correct password for your encrypted data, it'll unencrypt the data and you can download a editable copy of that file. So it, there is a unique feature there with Synology C2 if you actually combine two of the special features that they have listed here with data encryption and the ability to restore from the web, web browser. Well, the next unique feature with Synology C2 is actually comes around when you combine the ability to restore from the web browser with file versioning. So if you perform a hyper backup task without file versioning turned on, the way that your Synology will handle that is simply to copy the files from your Synology to your destination, whether that be a local destination or a destination that is a cloud provider. Where things get tricky is when you turn on file versioning with your hyper backup task, and Synology will now use a database type architecture to store all your files so that they can easily turn on file versioning and always have the latest version of all your files and then have previous versions of the files that have been changed. This allows them to keep the backup size small, but also makes things tricky if you want to restore individual files and it no longer it makes it so you can no longer restore individual files from the web. If you want to restore files from a offsite backup, in this case, if you have file versioning turned on, then you will have to download all the data from your cloud provider and use an app like the Hyper Backup Explorer that you can download from Synology.com to actually restore those files. If you're looking at one of the plan one options with Synology C2, that pretty much will wrap up all the unique features that makes Synology C2 a possible compelling option for offsite data backups. However, if you are looking at one of the plan two options, then there are a couple more unique features that are very beneficial. The first of which I've already discussed in depth, and that is the ability to have hourly backups. The next special feature that I wanna discuss though, is the ability to have a customized retention policy. What they mean by this is with the plan one option, you get 11 versions of your data. With the plan two options, you can customize that however you want, so you might be able to have 50 versions of your backup data. This is particularly important with having an hourly backup. So with a more frequent backup, you'll likely also wanna keep more versions of that backup so you can continue to go back like a week or two weeks back in time. So where this could be particularly interesting is if you're using Synology Z2, for a business case, and say your hours are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and you wanna have an hourly backup Monday through Friday for that time period. That means on a daily basis, you would have nine iterations of your data. So if you wanna go back in time two weeks and have a very fine tooth comb to be able to go back at, say a Monday morning at 10 a.m. I edited a file and I accidentally corrupted it. You can go back in time to 9 a.m. and restore that data point and have very little data loss and essentially make it so that your workers don't have to recreate a bunch of work simply because you had to go back a full day to restore a piece of data. So where that gets interesting is that means you would need 90 versions of your data and having the plan two option will allow that. There is a catch as there always is if you do upgrade from one of the plan one options to one of the plan two options and that is the fact that you lose free file versioning. So what you need to keep in mind here is while it might be tempting to have an hourly backup with 100 versions of your files, and while that is certainly possible, you do have to keep in mind that all that version data will count against your data allotment. 
So to make things simple, say you have 100 gigabytes of source files and you have 20 versions of that backup task that you want to perform and you maybe edit 100 gigabytes for each backup task. That means you'd have the source 100 gigabytes at the latest version and then you'd have 19 additional versions of one gigabyte each which is just the files that you edited during that between that backup task and the previous backup task. So you would have to account for a total of 119 gigabytes of data. Now where this could be tricky is if you have a source amount of data that is much closer to the limit and having multiple versions could actually put you over the limit forcing you to make a big jump in pricing simply due to the fact that Synology only sells their packages in one terabyte increments once you get up to the plan two options. And that brings us to one of the biggest downsides or negatives that I see with Synology C2 and that is how they have their pricing structure set up. If for instance you have 105 gigabytes of data that you need to back up, that does mean you have to jump from the 100 gigabyte plan all the way up to the 300 gigabyte plan. A lot of cloud providers charge you on a per gigabyte basis, and with Synology's pricing structure, you might have to end up paying a pretty hefty price premium to jump to the next tier up, simply because you are just slightly over that plan's allotment. However, when I did do price uh, comparisons, Synology C2 is very competitive, and unless you're in one of those cases where you're just barely over the, um, the one of your plan's options, then it's very likely that Synology C2 will still be cheaper. All right, so that's pretty much a wrap for today's video, guys. I am working on a follow-up video that will walk you through the entire process of setting up and using the C2 backup service on your Synology. So if you're not already an existing subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos, including the walkthrough on how to use Synology C2 backup. In addition, if you liked this video and found it helpful, give it a big like. I greatly appreciate that. Also, if you have any more questions about Synology C2 or any questions in general, leave those in the comments below and I'll answer those to the best of my ability or also consider checking out the Discord server if you are a Discord user. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching and until next time, Zach out.